Welcome back to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Knowledge Series. In this series of videos we will work through some of the key aspects of design for fire safety. In this video we will provide a quick overview of regulation associated with fire design and safety in building in the Australian context. Fire safety plays out through the various sections of the National Construction Code of Australia, often abbreviated as the NCC. Compliance with these standards is necessary to achieve an occupation certificate that is usually managed and issued by the building certifier. The building code is structured in a way that spells out the aims and objectives of each performance requirement and then provides a deemed to satisfy solution to each of those objectives. This approach paves the way for alternative solutions to be devised that fall outside of the deemed to satisfy requirements. These alternate solutions are usually devised as a consequence of site conditions or context and adopts an evidence-based approach using the knowledge and experience of licensed fire engineers. The two volumes of the NCC cover the major classes of buildings in volumes 2 to 9 with small scale residential buildings and standalone ancillary buildings covered in volume 2. The class of building will guide the aims and deemed to satisfy sections of the code. Class 2 buildings tend to be apartment buildings and other multi-residential buildings. Class 3 are other residential buildings that include hotels, aged accommodation, boarding schools and other instances of transient, unrelated people sharing a building. Class 4 covers management and maintenance residential components in a Class 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 building. Class 5 buildings are typically offices and Class 6 are retail. Class 7 are car parks and warehouses, Class 8 are laboratories and places of manufacture, and Class 9 are places of assembly including education facilities and buildings of a public nature. The various classes of building will have specific deemed to comply commensurate to their occupation and the way that they are used. So for example a large auditorium will have a high occupancy compared to say an office and therefore the escape requirements such as travel distances and widths would vary accordingly. Various sections of the NCC cover off on different aspects of the building but are integrated to provide a holistic approach to fire design. The first key principle of fire design is the detection and alert of a fire threat. This is facilitated through a network of sensors that detect the potential presence of a fire through smoke or heat. In some instances, such as dusty environments like workshops and production facilities, a thermal based detector may be used to prevent false alarms. Many detectors are focused on occupiable space, but depending on the type of building and the servicing strategy, there may be an almost equal number of detectors in installed in inaccessible areas that have building services, equipment and infrastructure installed. There are also break glass type fire threat alerts that are manually operated by the building occupants. Once a fire is detected, it activates the fire safety systems. This may trigger the closing of fire compartment doors and the sounding of an alert signal informing the building's occupants to evacuate the building. Most detectors in a class 2 to 9 building will be on a network that is collated to a central fire panel. This will provide a location of the source of the threat for firefighters entering the building. Once a threat has been detected, the primary aim is occupant safety. The provision of a safe and adequate means of escape, particularly for tall buildings, is a key consideration. In the first instance, access to a fire isolated stair is key to removing occupants from a potential hazard. The proximity, number and width of stairs is determined by building class 
and deemed to satisfy requirements that are spelled out in the NCC. Typically, there are deemed to satisfy requirements for dead end or single choice escape paths, as well as escape distance when there is a choice of exit. The logic of this is that dead end distances need to be short to minimise the time for a hazard to grow, whereas if someone has a choice, they would usually have more time to avoid a fire hazard by finding an alternate exit. Fire isolated stairs need to be constructed from a non-combustible material and the door leading into the stair needs to be fire rated. Fire rated doors need to be self-closing and open into the path of travel without blocking the escape width of the stair. The door handles on fire doors need to operate as a single action. These principles are aimed at ensuring that the escape path is unobstructed. Finally, most fire isolated stairs need to be pressurised in an emergency. The positive air pressure means air is always leaking out of the stair to avoid the intake of smoke and the tracking of fire inside a fire isolated stair. Fire suppression is the third aspect of fire safety. There are three main strategies of fire suppression that are cumulative. The more basic forms of fire suppression are human operated suppression that includes fire extinguishers and fire hose reels. The intention of human operated fire suppression is to eliminate small fire risks as soon as it occurs. The second role is to help combat a fire threat that may be blocking the pathway to an exit. Firefighters may also use fire hose reels to assist their suppression of a fire. Sprinkler based suppression systems are operated automatically to douse larger fires. Sprinkler systems are comprehensive, sophisticated and expensive. They tend to be installed in high occupancy buildings or high volume buildings with a large number of fire source features such as warehouses and other good storage areas. Sprinklers are also installed on the outside of buildings to prevent the vertical spread of fires from balconies and up facades. Facade based systems are often referred to as wall wetting systems and are used in situations where there is an elevated risk due to the site or project circumstance. A fourth aspect of fire safety is to ensure that the building is structurally sound for as long as possible. This is to avoid multiple casualties and excessive infrastructure damage due to tall buildings collapsing. The other main aspect is that whilst occupant safety has been ensured through alert, escape and suppression, firefighters are then inside the building and their safety is as important as the occupants who have fled the risk. Stability in a fire is contingent on the construction type and materials used. The fire rating of a construction is determined through deemed to satisfy requirements. Unique construction assemblies and materials need to undergo rigorous testing under scientific conditions and are conducted by certified agencies and laboratories. Product suppliers will often initiate fire testing on their assemblies and offer the reports as alternative deemed to satisfy assemblies in order to sell product. Fire resistance is usually created through barrier and insulation systems. Materials ignite and perform under heat load differently. Concrete and masonry based systems typically perform better as they do not combust easily and are naturally insulated from heat damage. Reinforced concrete systems are determined by the minimum cover needed to provide fire protection to the reinforcing steel. Steel construction performs poorly in a fire and needs extensive insulation to protect it in a fire. The use of intumescent coatings that expand with heat increase the insulation value around a structural element. Timber structures perform differently again depending on the nature of the wooden system used. Balloon or stud frame systems tend to burn more quickly than heavy wood systems. The use of heavy wood in tall buildings is deemed satisfactory as heavy wood is difficult to combust and burns slowly and predictably.
Changes to the NCC in 2016 included new deemed to satisfy provisions for buildings up to 25 metres tall. This eight storey limit is driven in most part by the reach of contemporary fire appliances or trucks. Controlling the spread of fire is the fifth and one of the more important aspects of fire safety for taller and high occupancy buildings. Slowing down the spread of fire is critical to provide adequate time for people to escape and for firefighters to enter the building to suppress the fire. This is particularly critical at the edge of buildings where fire can break through a facade and re-enter the building on the level above, effectively leapfrogging up the building. The flammability of the facade is critical because if the facade material is flammable, a fire can take hold of the outside of a building rapidly and can quickly escalate a small fire into a major inferno. There are two strategies for preventing a fire leapfrogging up a building. The first is through vertical separation. The provision of a fire rated spandrel behind the curtain wall on the floor above can slow the rate of fire spread up a building. Vertical separation is typically the only way to prevent the spread of fire up a building that uses a curtain wall strategy. The second strategy is to provide horizontal separation. This is where a horizontal barrier is provided between levels, usually as a slab extension. The projection width is deemed to comply solution described in the NCC and is dependent on the building class. This solution is more applicable to window wall facade strategies. In tropical and subtropical climates, this solution does not necessarily compromise the thermal performance of buildings as coal bridging or the tracking of heat and coal through the structure from the outside to the inside is not considered a significant problem. This is not the case for temperate and colder climates where isolation strategies are needed for slab projections to prevent coal bridging. In summary, the building codes of the national jurisdiction that you are working in usually determines the fire design response. Fire design strategies are usually an interrelated set of strategies that revolve around detection, alert, escape, suppression, structural adequacy and compartmentalization to slow down the spread of fire. In the following video we will see how those strategies work well, as well as illustrating instances where one part of the system breaks down, comprising the whole of building strategy in relation to fire.